ladies and gentlemen welcome back to exotic astrology and the other day somebody asked me a question which is <laughs> very difficult to answer but i will try my best to answer how to deal with hopelessness helplessness these 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 words keep coming back to our consciousness again and again that i am helpless i am hopeless i cannot do anything because almost everybody who has taken birth in this material world becomes hopeless about something in some point of their life not about everything not always about something in some point of their life it always happens so during that time it is essential that we understand the uh, truths of the scriptures and the principles and only then we will be able to stay hopeful <laughs> amidst of that hopelessness which keeps grinding us sometimes or all the time sometimes <laughs> okay so there are areas in our life like some people say my job is fine but when it comes to relationships i'm hopeless i'm helpless whatever i do it doesn't work somehow all the time i fail and then some people are like oh i have a very good husband or a very good wife but my career is never settled i'm always changing jobs i'm doing this i'm doing that ah oh. i'm tired <laughs> there are people in 20s who write to me <clears throat> that they are tired of changing jobs my god and 20s is barely the starting of some uh, one's career what will what will you do if you reach when you reach 30s 40s 50s and people work after 60s also these days so <clears throat> it's essential that we ground ourselves properly when we get those vibes from inside of our mind that that creeps us always all right so if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me and if you are feeling <laughs> hopeless or helpless in some area of your life and you want uh, my guidance or my suggestion then you can go to my website to book a reading you will find the link to the website in the description section of my videos down below and before i begin as i always say and today i must say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will get rid of your hopelessness yes that will happen so basically what is hopelessness what is helplessness you have tried everything and it still doesn't work that's hopelessness right and it happens again and again and again and again and again and again and we are like ah oh. i will surrender in this area you know it's not going to happen i can't i have done everything i have tried all the possible ways and means to get the solution but i have failed and not only i have failed once but every time i do every time i fail and sometimes we <laughs> encounter new new failures in a particular domain of our life in a particular area which means that we fail we learn from it and then we think that okay next time i will not do this mistake but the next time we end up doing some other mistake and then we are like <laughs> till when this will be going on till when will this keep repeating itself and we feel that the world is like it's too difficult to handle at times or that area of our life and we tend to give up regarding those areas where we feel hopeless or helpless for a long period of time because we feel that anyways even if i do anything it's <laughs> it, it doesn't help so why should i waste my time uh, going there or working there like for example many people who have had 2 3 4 5 6 relationships and they've had breaks and they were severe mental trauma torture some of them been abused mentally physically sexually then sometimes people are like i'm not getting into a relationship anymore because it makes my life hell all right or sometimes some people are like i try doing my own business but it doesn't work i try working under somebody it doesn't work so then what should i do <laughs> so these are difficult situations which come sometimes in our lives and there are so many people who write to me that their health is spoiled and they they they've tried everything they've tried allopathy they've tried homeopathy 
Ayurveda, this, that, oh my god, they've gone to astrologers, they've taken drinks, they've done homas, they've done yagyas, they've done mantras, they've done so many things, my god, all sutras they've tried, but everything has failed. So they are hopeless in the area of their health and they feel that they will not live much long. So when these circumstances come, it is very, very, very essential that we ground ourselves to something solid which will never perish. And what is that? That is our connection to the Almighty, to God. That never perishes because that cannot perish because that is beyond material circumstances. That is beyond the physical manifestations in this world because whenever anything is manifesting physically in this world, either it is internally or externally, it will perish one day because this material world is made in such a way that everything is perishable. So for example, <coughs> I have this mobile, but this has been three years almost, more than three years in fact. And the battery is going down and one day I have to throw this. Yes, hopefully not very soon, but one day I have to throw this. And then I have to take another mobile. So the same thing will happen with other things. This mobile, this laptop, this MacBook Pro Retina 15 inch with which I'm making this video will not stay forever. So similarly, it happens with relationships also or with our job also that we are fired sometimes or we or uh, our partners say that we can our partner says i can't stay with you that's it end of the story or they cheat on us sometimes that's even worse so anything which is there in this material world is susceptible to be you see it is they are made in a way that it that it will extinguish one day so we have to understand the nature of material things in this in this world that's the first thing we have to do that we have to understand that anyways these things will perish they come with the expiry date <laughs> this body uh, with which i am speaking i am talking i am seeing commands i am uploading my hands my legs i am walking will perish one day all right so the first step is that we have to acknowledge the fact that things can go wrong in this world and things will go wrong yes 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 things will go wrong so we have to come out of our illusion that things will always be perfect yes now you may be thinking oh everybody knows things will get difficult at times but no my dear sir no my dear madam there are many people who after seeing movies and staying in fantasy la 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 and reading these books and seeing tv serials seeing uh, videos in youtube they think that oh life is like a fairy tale it's like a la la land there will never be problems so that is not the case so first we have to acknowledge that we can get into trouble sometimes all right and that acknowledgement will make us happy because then we will not be too much frustrated when there are difficulties in life because suppose somebody tells you that oh sir you will go there there's a five-star hotel they'll feed you the best of the meals they'll feed you these that hundred deserts yes and then suppose you go there and then they say we only have rice dal for you so you you will not be able to control yourself because all your expectations will be shattered at a stretch right in a moment's time so we should not have unrealistic expectations from this material world we should always have realistic expectations from this material world and within that we have to see where we can work it out and how and to what extent okay so let's stop denying the fact that this world is a difficult place to live all right so when we do that half of the problems are solved then when a difficulty comes you're like anyways this was an anticipated okay so the next thing that we need to do is we need to deeply root ourselves to the philosophy of the scriptures. For example, reading books like the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, the Shrimad Bhagavatam, Gita, these four books especially. And if you're from a different religion, then your religious books, which, whichever books they are, you know, the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, Dharmapada, whichever tradition you are, 
so <clears throat> when we root ourselves deeply to these books then what happens is our connection with god gets strengthened which is beyond the realm of these material things which can never perish because spiritual uh, progress never perishes it always stays with the soul because it's not of the body it's of the soul today you may be the ceo of the company of any big organization or small organization but tomorrow when your body stops functioning they will throw you out of the company yes why because your body cannot work <laughs> but that does not happen with our spiritual progress whatever sp whatever spiritual progress one makes is never 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 lost krishna says in the gita neha vikram anasosti pratyavayo na vidyate svalpam apyasya dharmasya trayate mahato bhayat trayate mahato bhayat he says that even a little amount of endeavor in spiritual life can save one from greatest dangers mahato bhayat bhaya bhay means danger fear yes so when we read the scriptures then we will be understanding that okay my material life has these these problems and these are the areas which are difficult for me i understand but these are not all in all i i am identifying but there is something else also with whom i can identify so when that is there then suppose there are problems in our material life we will get bogged up we will get disheartened we will get hopeless but we will not be eternally hopeless that will not be there because uh, this example is given that when there is rain the river gets flooded but the ocean that does not get flooded because the ocean is very vast the ocean will never get flooded of course sometimes if there is like too much rain then there can be some disturbances i am not saying that but in general like i am from assam in india and we have the river brahmaputra and during the monsoons oh my god you have had it so much flood is there my god yes but you will never hear that the indian ocean is under floods or you know, the pacific ocean or any 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 big ocean like the why why does it happen because it's very vast yes so we have to become very deep we have to become very grave we have to understand how this material world works we have to understand the law of karma we have to understand the truths of the scriptures and in the scriptures there is the there is the classic example of shabri in the ramayana this example is there that shabri she was born in a family where her father and her brothers and her cousins they used to kill animals they were hunters and they were they their their lives were very degraded they used to it me they used to indulge in all kinds of intoxication and all the other nefarious activities which you can imagine but she was not like that she was not like any of them she was a very elevated lady spiritually because she had done many spiritual practices in her <coughs> past lifetimes and by the dint of her spiritual progress she had that consciousness inside that she did not want to waste her life indulging unnecessarily in materialistic objects so because of that what happened one day as it happens with everybody <laughs> at least in india that uh, you are you are of a particular age and then your father or your father or mother they will force you or they will push you sometimes yes that okay now you are of age and you need to get married so then what happened was her marriage was finalized and it was the day of a wedding sweet wedding you know imagine there's a wedding everybody is blowing the horns the trumpets my god such an amazing atmosphere it is right weddings but sabri was not thinking like that <laughs> sabri <coughs> was thinking the opposite because when the event of her wedding came she she had seen that just for celebration uh, her family and her uh, relatives they had murdered they had massacred thousands and lakhs and millions of animals just for celebration yes it's party time 
even in india there are so many weddings where if you go like when my mother goes to some wedding then i ask her what what was there in the menu then she says she uses she always says oh we have chick we had chicken we had mutton we had lamb yeah these things were there we had duck also sometimes so even even today now now to that is rampant everywhere that they kill animals always and they eat their flesh so when shabri <coughs> had seen all this her heart was completely shattered into pieces she was like i will not be a part of this blunder which these people have committed and then uh, the person with whom she was supposed to be married he was also an extremely materialistic person he was also just like her father and her brothers and her cousins and then she decided i will not marry <laughs> not i will not marry this person i will not marry only she she decided all right so i was here hearing a lecture of one of my gurus it was in hindi so <coughs> he was telling in this regard that uh, jab barat aa rahi thi <laughs> to shabri ke dil mein ek awaaz uth rahi thi wo awaaz usse keh rahi thi ki bhag shabri bhag bhag ja bhag ja bhag ja bhag yahan se <laughs> run if you don't run now you're finished <laughs> abhi nahi to kabhi nahi if not now then never so translation for those who don't know hindi uh, when when the when she was supposed to get married so that day so she was getting a voice from her deep down core that run away run away from here you do not belong to this place all right so then at the dead of the night she ran away from her home can you imagine it's like a movie scene oh where's the where is the lady <laughs> yes where 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 is the bride man kahan gayi <laughs> dulhan kahan gayi <laughs> oh dulhan gaya but the bride is missing you know it's like a big news there and then she ran 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 and she ran as like she has never <laughs> it was a very difficult time for her and then she was running 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 and they came to know that she has ran away now so Uh, her father and her brothers and her cousins had sent other hunters to find her and she knew very well that if she was caught and if she was taken back to the family then she will be killed because her family's reputation got hampered very badly because she ran away so she understood that now that i have left my family i cannot go back if i go back i will be slaughtered just like they have slaughtered millions of animals for my wedding so then chabri she went to the ashram of many 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 rishis and many sages and many gurus but unfortunately because she was from uh she was from a family of hunters and meat eaters nobody accepted her and then finally one day she entered the ashram of the great sage matang muni matang muni said i cannot accept you as my disciple <laughs> then shabri said that i have gone to every guru and everybody has denied and now you are also denying so if you don't accept me i will i will invoke fire and i will give up my body here i will because i can't go back it's not possible they will kill me there so better than dying at the hands of my relatives my family members i will uh, give my give up my life here only because i want to go close to god i do not want to waste my time doing materialistic activities <laughs> so if you also don't accept me then that's it i'm ending it here and then matang muni he was a divine sage he was a great personality so by the will of his uh, by his divine powers he understood that she is not a ordinary person she was not a ordinary lady she was not just uh, speaking she was actually meaning what she was saying and then matang muni said all right i will accept you as my disciple so you will stay in the ashram you will stay here and i will tell you you will do the activities of the ashram 
and we will do chanting we will do reading of the scriptures we will do yagyas homas we will do other activities and by that we'll purify ourselves and then by that we will obtain spiritual perfection but then what happened was one day matang muni uh, with all of his other disciples he went back to the spiritual world because they had all attained spiritual perfection but then sabri saw that these people are going to the spiritual world leaving her aside and then sabri ran and asked oh my dear guru maharaj what will happen to me will you not take me then he said there's something special which you will do <laughs> when treta you comes <coughs> that time lord vishnu will take avatar incarnation to kill the demons like ravan and hiranyakashyap uh, sorry uh, ravan kumkaran and meghna then all these people you know in indrajit was meghna only he was ravan's son which was killed by lakshman and there are so many other demons who will be there so vishnu will take incarnation as ram and his wife will be kidnapped lakshmi devi herself sita devi that she will be kidnapped by ravan and that's a part of the past time that's a part of the leela the game and by that lord ram will kill all the demons so he will search sita devi and he will come and when he comes <coughs> he will meet you and you will give her give him some uh, special information okay so you will personally be able to see and touch and serve lord vishnu directly as if he is like a normal human being you will you have that special uh, opportunity which i would like to give you only so you will stay back here and then she asked okay as you say that's the order of her guru so she obeyed and then she asked but uh, when will they come so then he said they will come soon <laughs> and by saying this he left with all of his disciples he went back to the spiritual world to vaikuntha never to return back and then shabri what she used to do is every day she will uh, because see why i am taking shabri's case here because <coughs> sometimes when we see her story externally it can appear that she was also very hopeless and she she was never hopeless but suppose we are in that predicament we would have surely become hopeless at least i would have become <laughs> so then what happened she every day morning she used to uh, she used to decorate the ashram the <coughs> the road which would lead you not know, to the entrance of the ashram because she used to think maybe lord ram comes today maybe he comes today what if he comes today and every day she used to bring berries from the forest and she used to eat herself the berries and she used to keep the sweet ones for lord ram and the ones which were not very sweet she used to keep aside for herself and then she will ultimately do this for every day and she did this for hundreds and thousands of years my god i don't know how many years she did this can you imagine every day doing the same thing and there no results can you imagine we do something for one year two year three years and there's no result and we are like ha ah, leave it but imagine she used to do this for every day and she did it for so many years my god i don't know how many years they say she did it for many thousands of years and then when she was doing this her the other people who used to come to the ashram you know the other people who used to sometimes hear that there is a lady called chabri who is doing all this then they will come and mock her and they will say that oh see you know actually you are a woman that is why your guru did not take you yes oh see you are born in this uh, family of meat eaters so that is why he did not take you oh see you are not spiritually elevated so he did not take you oh see you are not from a rich family so he didn't take you yes your guru has cheated you blah 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 all the nonsense they would say and they would try everything in their reach to demotivate this poor innocent lady who didn't have anything at all i mean apart from the love of god which she had inside her heart in her heart and the submissive and the surrender 
the submissive attitude and the surrender which she had for her guru matang rishi but whenever somebody used to tell her anything she used to directly tell them at their in their face that no my guru maharaj said that lord ram will come which means he will come you get lost <laughs> go out from here get out <laughs> so my guru's words will never be false whatever he has said has to come true and then finally one day that very day one final day came when lord ram and lakshman came and when chabri saw that lord ram has finally come and lakshman is also there then she was like my god i can't believe it <laughs> Can you imagine you are waiting for somebody from hundreds of thousands of years doing the same activity every day and all your every day you fail every day you think that oh maybe today lord ram will come no no he didn't he didn't come maybe no tomorrow he will come oh and today morning oh yes today he will come no he doesn't tomorrow oh yes maybe today <laughs> how many maybes she had in her basket <laughs> yes unlimited number of maybes and then finally lord ram came and then lord ram said now at this very moment i will send you back to the spiritual world where matang muni is and then the there was a celest spiritual celestial airplane vaikuntha airplane which came and the vaikuntha the vishnu doots they took her to the spiritual world where matang muni was so she obtained perfection of human life which is the ultimate goal and she is the epic example that you are doing every day the same thing and every day every day it's not that she was doing every sunday or every friday every monday no it was every day can you imagine she was doing it for hundreds and thousands of years but ultimately she got success so now that does not mean that if we keep doing it all the time after failing that we will also get success in our material things well that will depend on our karma but at least with our spiritual practices our mantras our reading of the scriptures and our inner sadhana that will definitely happen if we are sincere in our spiritual uh, commitments then god will definitely give us perfection that is what he has promised he says in krishna says in the gita kontaya prati jane hi name bhaktiya pranashati he says o son of kunti you declare to the whole world one who takes my shelter will never perish yes krishna says this in the gita name bhaktiya pranashati it is there in the gita this is not something which i have made for myself all right so we need to be hopeful we need to be patient so first we need to understand that this world will give us difficulties and after that we need to understand that when we do spiritual practices like shabri used to do then we will get the inner strength to handle all the challenges and in our spiritual journey one day definitely we will attain perfection and there are so many examples in the ramayan itself now there is this example of maharaj guha then there is example of kevar then there is example of sugriv then there is example of hanuman there is example of jambavan there are so many great personalities and time and again they have exemplified this that when you are true to your commitments in your spiritual path you will obtain spiritual perfection one day it may be delayed but it will come all right so be patient and keep doing and read the scriptures and if you have personalities like matang muni in kaliyuga of course it's very <laughs> difficult to find but you can still find spiritual centers spiritual retreats inside your town inside your village inside your city like for example uh, in my case now in december 28 29 30 31st 1st january 2nd january these six days i will be off because we have a big gathering a kirtan mela which is there in yandelsbrunn germany so that that's one example i am giving so in india there are so many places there's haridwar there's rishikesh this kanchipuram if you are in south if you are in the east there is puri if you are in the west you have dwarka if you are in north there is badrinath yes there is banaras there is hampi there are so many places my god you can visit these places 
and you can also read the scriptures read one sloka every day read one page from scriptures like shrimad bhagavatam and by that you will know that things will be difficult but it's okay there's no problem <laughs> all right because things will always be difficult in this material world all right so there you go if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is interested to know how to deal with hopelessness all right and if you want a consultation from me then you can go to my website you will find the website below okay until next time wish you good luck hope to be hopeful sometimes <laughs> okay bye bye see you